A 22-year-old man was hit in the chest by a bullet. He too was running, but did not get away fast enough. 19-year-old Bronx drill rapper Nas EBK has been arrested and charged with second degree murder. First and foremost, my thing is this. Who would be dumb enough to boom somebody in Times Square? While uh, K-Flock is setting up his self-defense case, the feds came in. And the feds came in with a racketeering charge. Yes, they um, indicted eight members of the Bronx gang, Sev side and third side, charged them with racketeering and other crime-related offenses. Y'all forcing my hand. I'm telling y'all, a couple of gonna be in my blunt for Sugar Hill. Y'all forcing my hand. I'm telling y'all, bro. Smoking y'all dead man. I'm gonna break my car and this pop, bro. And this pop. Where's your car, bro? Where's your car? That's what you're doing, bro. That's what you're doing. Come outside, bro. Come outside, bro. Come outside, Jeremiah. I'm in here with my man, Almighty Sus Gerb, and we are with what I've been told or what I've been hearing in the streets is one of the hottest groups coming out of Manhattan in many years in the drill scene. We got the sweepers in the building. How y'all doing? Since its creation in Chicago back in 2011, drill has continued to travel from city to city and evolve along the way. The current drill hotspot is the Bronx in Harlem, New York. Their scene exploded in 2021, and two years later, it is still very active. From the last video to now, a lot has happened. Alliances have been shattered. Day one homies have fallen out with each other. Rappers have continued to catch cases, but more rappers have joined the movement as well. The future is very uncertain, and nobody knows what will happen next. But in this video, We'll dive into all the events that have happened in Bronx Drill over the past year. This is part two of the story of Bronx Drill. In this video, we'll mention previously referenced rappers as well as groups. So if you're not familiar with the Bronx Drill scene, go check that out. Part one ended in late 2022 with the rise of Didi Osama. From the late summer on, Didi was on fire, racking up millions of views on every video he dropped. Things were looking good for his OY gang, but then on November 4th, the tragic news that Eda Baby, another OY rapper, had self-deleted, broke on the internet. As always in the drill scene, there were two very polarized reactions. The news hit Didi, Dida, and the other OY members hard, but the ops couldn't wait to hop on social media to mock him and get in the booth and add his name onto the list of people already getting dissed. Following Edot's passing, Shai K, 41 Hemi, and Duty Low teamed up to drop a tribute, and this would end up being the last ever collaboration between the OY and OGs. Although the two groups had been cool for several years, tension had been brewing. Following Edot's passing, IG Live surfaced of the two groups dissing each other as well as their fallen members. The situation got even more attention after a video surfaced of Shai K and ID Bobbin, which made it official to those who hadn't seen any of the previous back and forths. And then, about two weeks after this, Duty Low dropped the song, dissing Yellow, Noah, and Diddy, all of Shai K's fallen homies leading to a Shai K response. Dissing OY members that passed, like Benji and Naughty. These two groups falling out didn't really surprise anyone because it was basically already a constant theme of Bronx Drill. Around the same time, the OY and OGs were falling out. DOA had yet another internal conflict going on. C Blue and Set the Trend, AKA Seti, came up together in 2021 off their No Ozone songs, but in early 2023, they began beefing. The origin of their problems stem back to Sadie's beef with B-Love that popped off in late 2022. Since 2021, when DOA and OG started beefing, B-Love had found himself in an awkward situation because he had lived in DOA territory for several years before moving to Cortland, where he became an OG's member. So he was friends with many DOA members, especially Cave Flock and Dougie B, but 
he was still OGs. And Shai K and all the other OGs were going at it with K and Dougie and the rest of DOA. B Love being in the middle made the situation more complicated because the OGs had no problem dissing following DOA members, but many DOA members avoided smoking following the OGs members out of respect for B Love, but said he wasn't one of the people in his category and had no problem dissing following OGs even if they were B-Love's homies. Stop it! Talk with your ripper, what happened to you? What? TNT, no, I'm smoking explosive. Think that I'd be in it, you know I got stop it, nobody was dead. Lottie. And this would end up leading to problems between the two rappers. In late 2022, B-Love decided to diss him in a Hazard's Lights freestyle. Shot make him scream ass a high note. Said your bitch, nigga, I know. I won't diss on her dad, I got love for the red. Niggas know it and I know. If it's just me and him, that boy won't see tomorrow. I'm talking fist or the hollow. And from there, the two traded shots on social media. C Blue remained cool with B Love despite him and Seti going back and forth on social media and records. And Seti didn't like this and began taking shots at C Blue as well on IG, leading to back and forth between these two. So basically, by early 2023, there wasn't a ton going on musically for many Bronx drill artists. And for a lot of them, the main source of attention was beef. Didi Osama and Sugar Hill D Dot were both on the upper trajectory, but even they ended up falling out due to pride, ego, and a lack of communication. These two did a better job at keeping it off social media than a lot of other drill rappers, but videos still surfaced of them arguing, and the fans knew what was going on. That's, that's over wild, right? That's yeah, talking I mean, about you, know, right? Go to the other man and tell him about these stuff. You don't do none of that shit, man. You diss us on the songs. Like, nigga, Hood don't got no faith in us. Like, you gonna see that. All right, but you ain't tell J Star that you was hating on me? That's <laughs> Dave him. That's super Dave him. What? J Star that that's super how Dave him. <laughs> talking on my name. He said, I'm, you, you, he said that I said I'm hating on you. By this point, Didi Osama was by far the most famous rapper from the drill scene. However, in 2023, it appeared like his label was trying to move him away from drill and make his music more mainstream. After January, he started experimenting with all different types of sounds. He made some fun and melodic songs, some slower, more emotional songs, and even teamed up with Lil Zay Osama to make a song that appeared to be him doing his best to replicate an Angry Dirk song. This experimentation had mixed results and Didi cooled off some from 2022, but his wave still remained relatively steady. By this point, many of the original pioneers had also found themselves in a position where their careers were either stagnant or declining. He love Shai K, Nazi BK, Zeddy, Z Blue, Dougie B, and Use G's were all in this situation. However, in 2023, Shai G saw some forward progress when he dropped a song called Papa Perry that ended up blowing up and getting him his first record deal. His first song with the record label behind him was New Op, which racked up millions of views becoming his biggest song ever. So while everybody else was stagnant or declining, Shaw was seeing progress. With many of the already established Bronx drill artists behind bars, losing interest from fans, beefing with their homies, or trying to take their music in a different direction, there was space for new faces to emerge. And around January of 2023, a group called The Sweepers took advantage of this opportunity and began to take off. The Sweepers were a gang from the Douglas Projects in Manhattan, and they had beef with DOA, OGs, and OY. In January, a song called WNA by a Sweeper member called S.Go began to blow up. There were two big reasons behind the song's success. The first was the fact that S. Dot was able to do a K Flock impression accurate enough. To compete with AI. From the sound of his voice to his flow, S. Dot was able to sound exactly like K Flock. 
given the fact that a lot of people on the Bronx drill scene were already trying to sound like K-Flock, the fact that S.Go could do it flawlessly was a big boost for him. The second factor behind WNA blowing up was the production. Through 2022, Bronx drill producers had jumped on the Jersey Club wave and began mixing the drill sound with elements from Jersey Club, and many drill artists had decided to hop on pure Jersey Club beats. Throughout the year, the two sounds had continued to mix until around late 2022 when a new style called Dark Jersey Club emerged. This new style had the dark melodies typically associated with drill beats at tempos typically associated with drill beats, but also contained the kick pattern and sound chops that make Jersey Club, Jersey Club. The instrumental for WNA was a dark Jersey Club beat. And after its success, this new style became associated with S Dot and the Sweepers. While WNA was blowing up, another Sweeper member called J Hound dropped a song called Niki that also began blowing up, adding to the growing motion of the group. They continued dropping consistently with the main combination being S Dot, J Hound, and Nas GPG. They also had another member called J5. So by early 2023, the DOA rappers were fighting amongst themselves while more of their ops were blowing up on the scene. And in February, the group received more bad news when reports came out that k Flock, who was already on the island fighting a body with video evidence, was now being indicted in a RICO case with several other DOA members and the feds were trying to tie crimes going back to 2020 to the individuals in the case, including the body that Kay caught. Given the conviction rate and sentencing guidelines in these types of cases, this basically guaranteed that Kay would not be leaving prison until he was old. Then, literally a month after the news of this new RICO case broke, Nazi BK got booked for a body he allegedly caught in Times Square of all places, and he became another in a growing list of Bronx artists behind bars looking at major time. So, DOA found themselves in a situation where several of their biggest artists were locked up, and a lot of the remaining ones were fighting with each other while their ops were taking off. The Sweepers had beef with a lot of hoods, but they literally went out their way to make a song called Southside K. And when they started blowing up, several DOA rappers felt they had to do something. In March, Dougie B, who had disappeared since he dropped in late 2022, decided to return, dropping a snippet, responding to the Sweepers. He recruited Yagi B and Joe Bands, and the result was a track called OA, where they used the dark Jersey Club sound Sweepers popularized to diss the back. The record took off, racking up millions of views on YouTube. Around the same time, TG Flocka decided to diss the Sweepers back and dropped the record called Everybody Sweep, and the song also had the Sweepers dark Jersey Club style and also blew up, racking up similar numbers to OA. By this point, with the Sweepers having more and more established Bronx Trail artists dissing them, as well as hopping on their signature sound, more and more people were starting to find out who they were. They were making more media appearances, more fans were going to listen to their music, and they continued to be by far the fastest growing artists on the entire drill scene. March was also a big month for Sugar Hill D-Dot, who had signed with Priority Records near the end of the month. In April, it was time for him to drop his first label back single, and coincidentally or not, this was also the first song where he didn't sound 12 anymore. He dropped a record called Let It Go, and it got a crazy response, running up millions of views in the first couple weeks. The song had a drill and Jersey Club style production, but no violence or dissing, and was more of a mainstream style record that showed D-Dot possibly had the potential to branch off and become a more serious artist outside of Drill. A typical trend in Drill is any positive news being immediately followed by something negative. And in late April, while Let It Go was taking off, 
the news broke that Sugar Hill Keem had been sentenced to five years for the grip he had been caught with, which was an unfortunate situation, but compared with the potential time K-Flock, IZBK, and others were looking at, five years wasn't that bad. Meanwhile, the SETI Cebu beef was continuing to ramp up, and the situation ended up occurring where SETI pulled up to Cebu's spot, telling them to come outside, and when he didn't, Seti threw a brick at his side mirror like an angry ex, leading to C Blue spazzing on IG, saying he was smoking Seti's dad. You know, I say, come downstairs, bro. I just want to talk, bro. Like, it's just me and you. That's it, bro. Nobody else. You, you keep getting on the Instagram. You want to do this, do that. You know how I give it up, bro. You know I don't do this. I'm outside right now as we speak. Pop, bro. Y'all niggas just pop. Where to my dad? Now I'm a post your Addy. Y'all niggas just pop. You gonna break my car? Y'all niggas just pop, bro. Y'all niggas just pop. Where's your car, bro? Where's your car? That's what you doing, bro? That's what you doing. Come outside, bro. Come outside, bro. Come outside, Jeremiah. Come outside, Jeremiah. My dad is lit. I'm not jacking nobody. I'm smoking your father. I suck my dad. The situation seemed irreconcilable. But about a month later, C Blue called Seti and they were able to settle their differences and squash the beef. Hey, I said some things I should have said, you feel me? We both did some things we should have done, you feel me? But as men, you feel me, with the same dead mans and shit like that, I feel like niggas should put this shit behind us, you feel me? Well, we could come together, you feel me? Talk about everything, you feel me? Put this shit behind us and shit like that. Just, you feel me? And in June, they got in the studio again and recorded Seti Blue Part 2. This brings us to the present day. The most talented Bronx artists are still behind bars, while most of the remaining ones are seeing their careers cool off. S.Go and the Sweepers are the only artists with upper trajectories, and things aren't looking the greatest for the movement as a whole. The Bronx and Harlem drill scene appears to mirror Brooklyn drill in 2021 or Chicago drill in 2015 and 2016. With any drill movement, there's always a ticking clock when it comes to keeping the fans interested, and the loss of some of the best rappers to cases and indictments definitely sped the timer up. Things aren't necessarily over for sure, and there is still time for the scene to recover, but this isn't likely, and these are most likely the final days of Bronx drill.